on a manga series by Masuminu Shiru and directed by Mamoru Ashii. The groundbreaking 1995 original Ghost in the Shell was a masterpiece, no doubt one of the greatest anime films ever made. But how would you make an adaptation on a project like this? Well, it happened once, pretty successfully, so why not again? Stay with me until the end, as I have some really interesting news to share with you. Now, let's jump in with a short recap. In 2017, we saw an amazing project called Ghost in the Shell, written by Jamie Moss and directed by Rupert Sanders. Set in the near future when the line between robots and humans is blurry, the story circles around cyborg super soldier Major, who investigates her past from February to June 2016. The filming of Ghost in the Shell took place in New Zealand, with additional filming in Hong Kong that June. It was expected that the movie would premiere in Japan, so that is what happened. It premiered in Tokyo on March 16, 2017. It received mixed reviews, but one thing is the most important. Fans liked it. With praise for its action sequences, visual style cinematography, and score, but criticized for its lack of character development and story. This movie was challenging to watch. There was a scene in which characters grappled with naughty philosophical questions for every shot of a naked, generously breasted cyborg plumbing from the top of a building. When the soul is reduced to a series of electrical impulses and the brain is souped up with cyber implants, what is the nature of identity? Also, the question that was left unanswered was, why would a cyborg need a gigantic pair of knockers in the first place? The languid pacing and the cerebral element initially scared off the non-Japanese audience. So yeah, with the video release and slow building word of mouth, the film's cult success came much later. The director Rupert Sanders has beefed up the action, dialed down the introspection, and tweaked the enigmatic plot with a Wolverine-style origin story. The storyline sees Scarlett Johansson, who was a controversial piece of casting, and took the role of augmented cybernetic cop Major Matoku Kusanagi, delving into her own memory to learn the truth about her creation. But without making circles around, let's talk about the story itself. In the very near future, humans are developed with cybernetic improvements such as intelligence, strength, and vision. Hanka Robotics, who is an augmentation developer, establishes a secret project to develop a shell or artificial body that can integrate a human brain rather than an artificial intelligence. The sole survivor of a cyber terrorist attack, Mira Killian, after her body is damaged beyond repair, was chosen as the test subject. Hanka Robotics CEO decided to use Killian as a counterterrorism operative, despite the objections of her designer, Dr. Ule. Killian attained the rank of Major in Section 9, the Counterterrorism Bureau, just a year after. She starts hitting that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. No, really. She starts the mission working under Chief Dasuki Aramaki and alongside operatives Batu and Takusa. Killian has visions, or better said, hallucinations that Ule dismisses as glitches. Soon after, Killian destroys a robotic geisha after it murders a hostage, while the team thwarts a terrorist attack at a Henka business conference. Killian breaks protocol after she found that the geisha was hacked by an unknown entity known as Q's, and then dives into its AI for answers. But Tao was forced to disconnect her because the entity attempted a counterattack. Okay. Now, let's stop here. I'll give you a chance to re-watch the movie and prepare for what is coming next. Now, let's talk about the plans for the future. DreamWorks and Steven Spielberg, who had handled the US theatrical distribution of Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence, got the rights to produce a live-action film adaptation of the original manga. Soon after that, Steven Paul and Avia Red were confirmed as producers. And let's not forget Laida Calagritis, who was set to write the screenplay. In 2014, a completely new story. It was reported that Rupert Sanders would be the new director, with William Wheeler as a screenplay writer. Yeah, sounds chaotic, because it was. It's a vast enterprise. I think I was second or third in the mix, and I know there have been at least six or seven writers, said Wheeler. Long story short, the full cast was announced in April 2016 and the movie was released on March 31, 2017. When it comes to the sequel, there is no official date as of yet, but let's hope to hear something from the studio soon. Now, let's talk about the cast. Did you know that Margot Robbie was reported as being in early talks for the lead role? And this was announced on September 3, 2014. Anyway, 
After Robbie had chosen to play Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad, instead, it was announced that DreamWorks had made a $10 million offer to Scarlett Johansson, and that's how the story was wrapped. Scarlett Johansson as the main protagonist, Major Myra Killen, slash Matoko Kusanagi, beat Takeshi Kitano as Chief Daisuke Aramaki, Michael Carmen Pitt as Kuzi, and Palau Asbeck as Batel. And I'm not going to lie to you. As for the release date, there is no official statement about the sequel's possible cast list. Ghost in the Shell 2017 had a rich, profound narrative. It grossed $169.8 million worldwide and $40.5 million in the United States and Canada, while the production budget was $110 million. On Rotten Tomatoes, the movie was rated 5.5 slash 10, based on 297 reviews, and with an approval rating of 43%. Ghost in the Shell boasts cool visuals and a compelling central performance from Scarlett Johansson, but the end result lacks the magic of the movie's classic source material. It's written on their website. Los Angeles Times, on the other hand, had a completely different opinion. Some of that ravishment arrives courtesy of the movie setting, a stunning pan-Asian metropolis that makes boldly inventive use of the Hong Kong skyline. It's tightly stacked buildings tricked out with enormous holographic billboards. So yeah, as I said before, the fans like the story. A young woman revealing mechanical sinew underneath her human exterior. Her skin and bones crack and brutally rips the hatch off a tank. A visual delight that will definitely provoke momentary awe. Once the movie was released, we could hear from the movie makers that they had a plan to make a live-action movie franchise. Anyway, it's been almost five years now, and there is no sequel. Lately, especially on social media, the rumors are getting louder and louder. But then, it will be fair to ask, what will the plot of it be about? Most likely, if the sequel ever happens, the storyline will circle around Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence, or the manga chapter, Robot Rondo. The events are happening in 2032, and it opens with Patel and Takusa smashing that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell. No, really, in all seriousness now, it opens with Patel and Takusa teaming up. Takusa, by the way, is an agent with very cybernetic upgrades. After a series of suspicious deaths due to doll-like fun robots, or malfunctioning gynoids if you wish, Section 9 got a mission to investigate. Takusa and Batel will be sent to investigate possible political or terrorist motives. The reason they're searching for that is the most recent Gynoid's remains are showing that they are indeed illegal ghosts in these robots. Human sentience is being artificially duplicated onto the dolls illegally, and that was Section 9's conclusion. This has made the robots more lifelike, and most likely, that stands behind the motives for murders. Ishikawa, who is an information warfare technology specialist, was called to a homicide scene, and she explains that the victim is a consignment officer at Genoid Company, Locus Solis, Jack Watson. She is saying that most likely he was killed by the Yakuza, since the previous Yakuza boss was recently killed by a Gynoid, and now they killed him as an act of revenge. Takuza and Battelle get into the bar known as one of the places owned by the Yakuza's boss. But you could sense that things won't go according to plan. Batal opens fire, killed the cyborg that murdered Watson, and wounds numerous gang members. But I'll stop here with the story and won't spoil everything before the movie gets released, if it ever will. I hope that we'll hear something as soon as possible. But until then, what is your theory about the possible plot? We'll see you in the next video.